please keep yourselves on mute. Um, if you could uh, keep yourselves on mute because um, it, it's a bit distracting when people are presenting to hear background noise. Um, and we certainly have a jam-packed night to share with you, um, including a long-anticipated um, camel campaign. But first of all, we are very excited to welcome our first speaker, Andre Borel. Andre is an Australian filmmaker focused on making documentaries that positively impact society. His multi-award winning documentary, Envoy, Shark Cull, a Discovery Plus original and showing on Stan, created waves in Australia and overseas regarding the horrific culling of sharks and other marine animals off the east coast of Australia. With hundreds of hours of in-water experience with large sharks, Andre is an expert in human wildlife conflict coexistence. Andre was the catalyst that brought the Nets Out Now Coalition into existence, whose membership includes national and international high profile NGOs and ambassadors. The coalition stands to stop the killing of wildlife and improve protection for beachgoers and marine life within Australian waters. Just before um, Andre um, uh, starts, I, I would just like to um, ask, if any of you have any questions for Andre, just put them in the chat box, please. And uh, at the um, at the finish of Andre's presentation, he'll respond to them straight away. So thanks and over to you, Andre. Awesome. Thank you so much. I will pull some slides up. I'm not big on slides or presenting from slides, but um, it will help keep me on track. So give me two seconds. I'll pull those up. And uh, yeah, any questions, please. I'll probably only speak for maybe 20 minutes and keep 10 minutes for questions. So please do drop them in the uh, in the, in the chat box. Uh, just getting that up now. Perfect. Please do drop them in the chat box because I'd like this to be as interactive as possible. Um, okay, bit of a high level uh, introduction to shark culling in Australia. Some of you are probably very across this topic. I, I, uh, I understand that. However, for those that aren't, I'm going to give the, I guess, the high level 40,000 foot view um, for, for people who might know nothing about it. So uh, how I became involved in this topic was, uh, as Linda mentioned in the introduction, making a feature length documentary. Uh, about it. So started production in 2019, released in 2021, uh, 100 minutes. I'd, I had only made short films before uh, or short like corporate videos and things. And I thought how much harder can a feature length film be? It's just uh, a few short ones stacked end to end uh, in terms of duration, but I was very wrong. It was hugely challenging, but we pulled together a pretty cool project with some pretty cool people and exposing some uh, really important stuff. A quick history about shark culling in Australia. So 1937 is when it all started in New South Wales in response to some shark bite incidents. Now, at the time, uh, at the time, it was, you know, not that much was known about sharks. There were some people getting bitten and it's like, OK, what do we do? And in 1937 logic, it was let's go kill a bunch of sharks. What we know today is is there was a cluster of bites in Sydney because blood and effluent and offal and things were being dumped into waterways which is obviously a huge shark attractant uh so in hindsight uh, the reason that the, the, the cluster of bites happened that started this whole thing was quite uh obvious uh, but at the time it wasn't 1962 queensland started as well new south wales has done exclusively exclusively with nets uh i'll explain a little bit more about what shark nets are uh, in 1962, Queensland joined with nets, but also with hooks. Uh, you've probably heard of them called drum lines. You might have seen the footage that we released about a month ago now of um, a tiger shark caught in a drum line being horribly killed. Bit of an update and more on that at the very end of the presentation. Um, 2014, I'm sure a lot of you know, a lot of you were probably involved in the in the shark cull starting in Western Australia. Luckily, that ended quite quickly. The national and international pressure was quite heavy um to stop uh so the, it was technically a trial and that trial was abandoned however queensland and new south wales essentially got away through that whole process and all that attention on wa 
scot free. They 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 really didn't get the attention, even though their their programs are much bigger, much broader, much more brutal than what was going on in WA. WA being new and novel and never happened there before, got all the attention. 2024 today, there's some rumblings in South Australia. Again, obviously, we've seen a cluster of shark bites uh, in in South Australia. The reason behind that, we don't know yet. Possibly changes in environmental conditions, currents, temperatures, um, but uh, nevertheless, a cluster, which obviously prompts some uh, emotional responses and some fear-based responses and some knee-jerk responses. So there's some mares in regional South Australia, coastal regional South Australia that would like to go out and kill a bunch of sharks, white sharks specifically. They're a protected species, so obviously they can't just go out and do it, but they are trying to apply pressure to the South Australian government to go and do that. Can't happen without an exemption under the EPBC Act. Uh Queensland and New South Wales get away without those exemptions because they were a pre-existing program before the year 2000, before uh, uh, before the EPPC Act existed. So they can continue under a continuation of use clause. They wouldn't need approval. South Australia would, and WA did, did need approval and did get it under a um, national interest exemption. Uh, so there's a real mess of legal... Uh, jurisdictions and laws and all sorts of things when it comes to this topic. We'll go into that a little bit more later, specifically pertaining to the tiger shark incident in Queensland. However, if you have broader questions uh, about federal environmental legislation, how these states allowed to go and slaughter a bunch of protected species, feel free to drop them in the in the comments and we'll come back to them. Uh, okay, so the programs. First of all, the, the first thing the government will try and tell you is that it's not a cull uh, when it absolutely is. Uh, these programs are there to catch and kill target species to reduce their populations, the theory being less of those sharks around, lower risk of shark bite. It is by dictionary definition a cull as much as the government will avoid using that word uh, like the plague and even contend that it's not a cull, which is blatantly absurd. absurd. Okay, so into the equipment. How is this actually done? This is a drum line. A drum line is a fancy word for a baited shark fishing hook. The hook hangs from a buoy and the buoy is anchored to the ground, but essentially uh, it's it's a shark fishing hook. Uh, Queensland has 380 something of them, 383 of them, I believe. Uh, they have no method of alerting, uh, alerting the contractor or the government when something is hooked. So a shark will hang there until it either dies or it is found by the contractor. It's a non-target shark. It will be released. If it's a target shark, um, it will be killed as per that tiger shark footage we saw and we'll discuss a little bit later. In New South Wales, they have a slightly different method here. Between those floats along the top, they actually have a magnetic sensor. When something's hooked, it pulls that magnetic sensor. It sends a message to the government contractor who comes out, tags and releases the shark. Not all sharks are released uh, are released alive. Uh, we don't know that all sharks survive, but it is be it's the lesser of two evils compared to this. Uh, however, you're still catching an animal, inflicting a whole heap of stress and pain on it. And some species of shark are particularly susceptible to post-release mortality, specifically hammerheads. Hammerheads, um, something to do with the, the way their uh, the lactic acid builds up. They, they have really, really bad post-release mortality. So... Um, not all as rosy as uh, the proponents of smart drum lines would have you think, but better than the atrocity that is Queensland's equipment. Shark nets. This is probably what most people have heard of. And uh, a lot of the general public think a shark net is a barrier. They, th they picture some sort of fence that runs along the beach and returns back to shore and creates some sort of enclosure. Sharks out there, people in here, everyone happy. It's not what it is at all. It's a fishing net. Full stop, end of story. It's a gill net a set gill net designed to catch and kill sharks catches and kills a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Not just, uh, not just sharks, uh, in Queensland, their top set, uh, meaning they're set at the surface. They go down about six meters in about 12 meters of water. So they don't even go to the bottom. They're only about 180 meters long, uh, despite being used to protect, uh, beaches many, many kilometers long. So they're a far cry from what people think they are. New South Wales, more or less the same, 150 meters instead of 183 meters, bottom set instead of top set, still only a bit about six meters high, still only set in 10 to 12 meters of water. So fundamentally the same. New South Wales, again, slightly lesser of two evils. They remove them for whale season to not entangle and, and potentially drown humpbacks, which is uh, mighty nice of them, but uh, 
obviously we contend that they shouldn't be there at all. Uh, target sharks. I mentioned target sharks before, and I want to be really clear um, that the nets don't know what a target shark is and the drum lines don't know what a target shark is. They're going to hook and catch and kill whatever they'll hook and catch and kill. The difference between what's on the target shark uh, on the target shark list and what's not is that if the contractor finds something alive and it's a tiger shark, a, a target shark. Sorry, I keep looking at the tiger shark image in the middle in the middle there, which is quite a cool drawing. So I keep saying tiger shark. If a, a target shark is found alive, um, it will be killed, whereas a a, a non-target species will be released. That's the only difference. Obviously, the equipment cannot discriminate between what is target and what is not. It's purely how they're treated when they are found alive, which is somewhat rare, but it does happen. This was the 19 target species uh, in Queensland until uh, until 2023. They've reduced it to seven. Um, New South Wales have a target list of three. White tiger bull, uh, which is responsible for most injuries and fatalities to humans. Uh, so you can kind of see how they get there with their target list. Um, Queensland, you cannot at all uh there's some absurd species on here lemon shark is that is ridiculous um gray reef shark that is ridiculous uh great hammerhead literally never been uh never been involved in a fatality of a human ever in history of records going back to like 1600 or something like that so a lot of these really stupid species were removed um when the, the list went from 19 down to seven in queensland uh, but there's still four species that shouldn't be on there. Uh, black tip reef sharks, Australian black tip sharks. Uh, again, species that have never killed a person, but for some government bureaucratic absurd reason were left on the target list. We don't know why. The scientific working group advocated for three. Uh, they kept seven because just Queensland government things, I guess. Uh, of course, it's not just sharks. Uh, there is a whales, rays, dolphins, turtles, all sorts of other things killed in this uh, in, in this program. One very personal, I guess, story or very about an individual animal. It is uh, the story of uh, this. This is in our film as well of Kyra. Uh, so, as a calf, uh, she was hooked on a drum line in the stomach. Her mum is desperately seen trying to keep her alive keep her at the surface, keep her able to breathe. Uh, SeaWorld came along and rescued her. Uh, by all reports, she could have been released, uh, but wasn't. So still lives at SeaWorld on the Gold Coast uh, and is used in the dolphin breeding program. So, uh, yeah, I mean, someone cynical like me might uh, see that for the commercial motiv motivations that might have been behind that. Um, obviously, SeaWorld will put a happy a happy story on it, slap some lipstick on it and say, we're great. We rescued her. Um, so yeah. What else can be done? The, the next question, uh, you know, my, my personal take is that the ocean is a wilderness. If you enter the, if you enter the wilderness, you should be prepared, pre prepared. You should be knowledgeable and you, you are prepared to take some risk. That's my personal approach. However, the governments, especially after they've been killing sharks for so long, are never going to go to that approach. They're never going to go to, okay, educate yourself, learn how to be safe in in, in the ocean and, uh, you know, every man and woman for themselves now. That's just not going to happen. Uh, I learned that quite quickly through making the film and through making, uh, you know, engaging with government. They're going to have to do something else. They've painted themselves into a corner where they now made themselves responsible for people's safety at the beach. They're going to have to do other things. So here's some of the things that can be done. Bite resistant wetsuits uh, is a fantastic solution. Trauma kits for when surf lifesavers aren't in attendance, you know, outside of patrol hours, there should be trauma kits, signpost mounted or fence mounted uh, at beach entryways and things like that. So if something does happen, um, there's tourniquet in there. There's there's all the stuff you need to stop the bleeding and stop that shark bite from turning into a fatality. Um, there's been a couple of shark bite bites recently where people got very, very, very lucky um, that someone nearby was a doctor, someone nearby had a weight belt from diving, someone nearby had a tourniquet in a first aid kit or something. But it was it was sheer dumb luck. Um, that someone was there who was trained and knew what they're doing and had something to tie around a limb that stopped those shark bites becoming fatalities. Um, uh, it was not through any sort of design or, or, or program of the government's doing. 
just sheer dumb luck. So that's something that could be done and should be done. Um, drones. Drones are fantastic at spotting sharks, really good at spotting sharks. Uh, and you can clear the beach if it's a dangerous species because you can tell quite easily um, from the profile what kind of species it is. And they're also training ID. Uh, they're training AI to do that species identification now as well instead of the drone pilot having to do it. So drone pilot can have glare on the screen or whatever. It could be challenging. It's got other things going on, um, uh, whereas uh, AI can do it now as well. So um, that's fantastic. Shark safe barrier. So actually create a barrier. There's also another one out of Western Australia called Eco Shark Barrier. Um, actually create a barrier. Actually create what people think shark nets are. Not suitable for all beaches, not suitable for all conditions, uh, but in a lot of places it is. Personal electrical deterrence, which which repel sharks because they have uh, electrical receptors in their nose. Um, fantastic solution. Tourism is a solution. Instead of killing them, use them positively, use them for positive economic impact um, without harming them, without killing them. Um, electrical deterrence that I mentioned before on the previous slide that can be worn personally can also now be turned into a barrier. So an electrical barrier rather than a physical barrier. Camouflage is great. One way to avoid ever having an interaction with a shark is avoid being seen in the first place. So camo is great. Even um, this might seem a bit co comical, but eyes, eyes on the bottom of surfboards, eyes on on tanks, uh, um, scuba tanks, for example, uh, are really effective. Uh, they are uh, sharks are an opportunistic predator. They know when they're being watched, and they know when they're not being watched, and they will not try anything if they feel they're being watched. Spent, like my introduction said, spent hundreds of hours in the water with sharks. I know their behavior very well, uh, and yeah, if you've got eyes on them they're not trying anything absolutely so yeah so many solutions out there some you can do yourself take matters into your own hands take your safety into your own hands some the government uh, can roll out and realistically probably will have to roll out because like i said they've painted themselves into a corner where they can't just say um you know enter at your own risk anymore it's it's impossible after the nearly 100 years of uh, killing sharks that they've been doing and uh, essentially putting that burden for, for safety at the beach onto themselves. Okay, uh, we're going okay for time. I'll give you a quick update on the tiger shark incident. So for those that haven't seen it, I do have the footage here, but I'd rather not show it because it's fairly graphic and everyone who's interested and active and involved in this space sees enough um, pretty rough stuff uh, on a regular basis. So I'm not going to show it here. If you want to seek it out, it's on our YouTube. It's on our Instagram. You can you can easily find it. Um, but basically, just to give you the short verbal version of what happened, Tiger Shark was found alive on a drum line on the Sunshine Coast, Caloundra. Uh, contractor comes along, ties it up to the side of the boat uh, to kill it as per standard operating procedure in the, in the Queensland Shark Control Program. What happens next is pretty horrific. So they do a horribly really really incompetent job of trying to kill the shark now obviously we don't think the shark should be killed at all however um that is the current process and it is done so poorly they stabbed the shark in the head probably five ten times trying to kill it via spike to the brain uh and they can't uh they 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 miss they whatever they do wrong the the, the knife is incorrect it doesn't work. So then they flip the shark upside down and they cut it open while still alive. Bear with me. I'm nearly done. Sorry. Um, they cut it open while still alive and remove the heart while still alive since they failed to kill it um, the other way, the correct way, quote unquote. Um, anyone with a pair of eyes can see it was horribly cr cruel. The shark was alive through the whole thing. The shark was struggling through the whole thing. It's Cruelty as per Animal Care and Protection Act every single day of the week. Anyone with a pair of eyes can see that. Uh, we reported to the RSPCA. Now, any um, marine cruelty is ordinarily investigated by um, Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, but Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries is who runs the Queensland Shark Control Program. So we reported it to the RSPCA with a note to say, please do not pass this on to QDAF. Um, it is about QDAF, it would be a conflict of interest. Nevertheless, it got passed on to QDAF. Uh, QDAF investigated it and they found no offense occurred. Now we thought they would say, we thought they would say, uh, we can't do anything here. Queensland Shark Control Program is exempt from the Animal Care and Protection Act. We thought that's what they say, they didn't. 
what they actually said was this was not cruelty. This was best practice. This was not cruelty. And they relied on expert witness, expert testimony of a, um, a shark scientist with very close links to QDAF to, to, to claim that. Uh, so that was interesting. We really thought they'd rely on the app. Ah, we have an exemption. We can do what we want. They didn't. They had the audacity to say this wasn't cruelty as per the Animal Care and Protection Act uh, definitions, uh, which, like I said, anyone with a set of eyes would disagree with. So that was interesting, though. I will just go over um, the uh, exemption in the Animal Care and Protection Act because I do think it's interesting and important. So I will skip that. Um, okay. So the exemption reads, I'm not going to read it word for word, but use of fishing apparatus under the shark fishing contract. It's an offense exemption if A, and you'll notice all of these at the end are and, and, and. So you can't just satisfy one. You have to satisfy all three. The act that constitutes the offense is the use of fishing apparatus. One, and the use is to protect person from shark attacks, from attack by sharks, and is carried out by uh, uh, basically a contractor with an agreement with the state. You have to satisfy all three because they read and, not or. Um, we dispute that what we saw there would meet the exemption for two reasons. They would have to demonstrate that that person would have attacked, uh, that th that shark would have attacked persons, which we don't think they can do. And, and also the other one, fishing apparatus. That shark was not killed with fish fishing apparatus. If it had died on the, on the drum line, sure, killed with fishing apparatus. If it died in a shark net, entangled, sure killed with fishing apparatus. It wasn't. It was stabbed in the head repeatedly with a knife and then cut open and then its heart removed with a knife. A knife is not anywhere in the act's definitions under fishing apparatus. So, um, yeah, we, we as far as they're concerned, the case is closed. No cruelty took place. No, no charges will be pressed. As far as we're concerned, um, it's not over yet. We're obviously going to continue to assume to pursue it, we're going to try and get it reopened um, with RSPCA this time instead of QDAF. We're also going to uh, escalate it to the ombudsman, all sorts of things. So um, that's a bit of an update on that situation. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, our, obviously the extension of our position on this, on the exemption, is that only sharks that die on the hook or only sharks that die in the net meet this exemption. Any shark that is pulled up beside a boat and stabbed to death, it's our position that it doesn't actually meet this exemption and cruelty charges could be brought every time a contractor uh, has to kill a shark. So, um, yeah, that is probably the end of my presentation, I believe. Yes, it is.